Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas with Mary Bird from the Arthritis Expo and the Arthritis Foundation. Um, we've talked about symptoms. We've talked about uh, the different kinds of arthritis and what to do, how to prevent, what to do. But we've got a wonderful expo with all kinds of information taking place tomorrow. Tell us all about it. Yep, it is. Um, we've done this Gosh, I think at the Health and Wellness Center in Green now for three years. We've done it in Summit County for a number of years. Again, it's just a great location, and it's free, and we have four different speakers that are going to be there. And we have Tiffany Clark. She's a certified nurse practitioner from the rheumatology department at the Cleveland Clinic main campus, and she'll be talking about inflammatory types of arthritis, Mm -hmm. focusing on rheumatoid arthritis. And then we have Dr. Nicholas Dinacola. He's an orthopedic surgeon in Akron, and he'll be talking about managing osteoarthritis and specifically some medical and surgical treatments for hip and knee osteoarthritis. Mm -hmm. And then there's Steve Wilkins. He's an RN from the um, Cleveland Clinic Akron General um, Hospital, and he'll be focusing on balance and how important that is as we age and preventing falls. And then our final speaker is Ron Tristano. He is a PGA professional, and he um, is at the Edwin Shaw Rehab Institute Challenge Golf Program. And he is going to talk about how anybody can golf if you have limitations really? from arthritis or a disability. That His talk is golf is wellness, so he'll be speaking as well. And again, folks can stay for the entire morning or just stop in and listen to one or two speakers. There'll be a couple breaks and community exhibits from different nonprofit organizations and some, um, oh, I think the Summit County Office of Community and Consumer Affairs will be there and some folks from Stark County. So it should be a really fun morning. So booths and booths of exhibits yes. all taking place. And then these four speakers, will they all be speaking at the same stage at different times of day? They, they are. The first speaker is going to be um, Tiffany Clark on rheumatoid arthritis. She'll be starting at 9. And then Steve Wilkins will be talking about balance at 945. Mm-hmm. There's breaks in between. 1030 is Dr. Um, Dina Cola, the orthopedic surgeon. Mm-hmm. And then Ron Tristano will wrap it up at 1115. And then one of my colleagues will be talking a little bit about some of the programs and resources that the Arthritis Foundation offers. And that'll take us up till about noon. So I love the idea of golf as wellness. That's yeah. the 1115 one. That is. That what is. a great idea. Is there a cost for this, Mary? It is absolutely free, and there are going to be door prizes. Um, I've got to say there's no great vacations or new cars, but we do have door <laughs> prizes, and the winner must be present. So if you do come and you're able to stay all morning, stick around, you might win a door prize. Oh, cool. That that's and worth it anyway. Absolutely, but, but also just the idea of getting that much good information. It's just good to have. If someone's not able to go, you also have some tremendous resources and other ways to get them. Tell us about those. We do, and if you haven't been to our website lately, I encourage you to check it out because we've totally revamped it. It's updated, much easier to get through, and it's just arthritis dot org. And one of the new resources that we've gotten, um, it's been available now for a little over a year. It's called the Better Living Toolkit, and it comes in three versions, one for rheumatoid arthritis, one for psoriatic arthritis, and one for general pain. And you can call the 800 number that's listed on our website, or you can actually order it online, and it'll take a couple weeks to come. But it includes a couple brochures specific to the kit you ordered. It also includes um, a jar opener, it includes a copy awesome. of, of Arthritis Today magazine, which uh-huh. is our award-winning magazine that comes out six times a year. And if you actually become a member of the Arthritis Foundation for $20 a year, you get Arthritis Today magazine. But it's a really f- it's got great information in um, the magazine. Um, when it comes out, I'm always excited to get it. It's got fun stuff. And there's usually a celebrity who's talking about their experiences with either rheumatoid or psoriatic or mm. osteoarthritis. So I encourage you to order a Better Living Toolkit if you or somebody in your family is dealing with arthritis. And if there's any people listening who might know of a child in their family that has juvenile arthritis, we have a version of a backpack for young kids, and that's free, Nice. and then a version for teenagers, and they're a little bit different, 
but they each include a book called Raising a Child with Arthritis and a brochure on what teachers should understand because so often, children especially, there's no symptoms. You can't look at a eight-year-old and see something. The damage or the inflammation is taking place inside their body. I mean, on a, on time, at times, their joints will look swollen, but um, it's important for teachers to understand that there's going to be some limitations that child might be, not be able to do recess or to do gym or whatever. So great resources for, for parents and families. Let's online. build on that because that was my very next question for you was thinking about the caretakers of someone with arthritis. Certainly there are ramifications if you're helping a child and, as you say, the teachers, things that they need to know, um, or a spouse or a, a, an adult child taking yeah. care of their parent, yeah. some of that sandwich generation, yes. caring for someone with arthritis, what do you recommend? Please, please check out our website. And mm -hmm. we have so many free brochures that um, are available on any type of arthritis and how to deal with um, somebody who's struggling with having some limitations that things are not able to do any any longer that they miss. And we also have a lot of blogs and interactive information on the website that you can join in a chat or you can put down a question you have. And it's I think it's really important, and you mentioned that, people feel a little bit isolated with a chronic disease, not only arthritis, and caregivers or spouses that are dealing with that I think it's so important to share with others who are, who are yes. also dealing with that. It's Arthritis is not only physical, it's emotional, and, mm -hmm. and it, it takes its toll in a number of ways. Anytime you're feeling a limitation, that's going to bug you. It does. It and does. Yes, that can uh, have all kinds of ramifications as yeah. well. Because it affects so many people, Mary, do you have um, volunteer opportunities or different things that people can help others through this? We do, and believe, we, we love our volunteers. They're, they're just wonderful to... Um, However, give give of your time, your talent, your resources. We have a number of food and wine events around that um, we always need people on committees. It's Those are fun events. We have the Walk to Cure Arthritis. That's held at the Cleveland Zoo every May. Mm. We always need people to participate on committees to um, help get that going. And if you're ever interested in forming a team, it's um, just fun things to do. One of our events coming up, well, not coming up, but six months from now in December is Jingle Bell Run, and that's um, a walk or runs. It's it's just really fun because literally people dress in Santa Claus hats, mm -hmm. and they have jingle bells on their <laughs> tennis shoes, and it's held at um, Legacy Village in the Cleveland area. It's just fun to go and see how everybody is is comes together, and those are events we have, and volunteers, we always, we, um, we need them if if we are doing any type of events or program, even at the expo, you'll see people sitting at tables um, trying to get folks to sign our advocacy letters or handing out literature, things like that. So absolutely, on our website, you can check on vo volunteer opportunities. Wonderful. And you've mentioned some fundraising events. Um, I'm sure also if people just want to uh, contribute or be a donor of some kind, there's oh. a way to do that. Oh, absolutely. It, it, do it does say there's a that's as simple as it is. It's mm -hmm. click. It says donate here, and you can click. And again, become an, a member of the Arthritis Foundation for twenty dollars. We'll give you that Arthritis Today magazine six times a year, and that's um, fantastic. it's just fun to get that. And so see. good. Um, there, I understand there was a new bill recently passed, very recently passed, as far as advocacy for people who are going through this experience. Talk about that. Yes, we were part of a number of different chronic disease organizations and, and, and associations within the state of Ohio. And the bill that the governor signed just a couple weeks ago is about prior authorization. And prior authorization basically means that an insurance company has a protocol that has to be followed um, before an individual can receive a medication or a treatment. But we've been told by provider offices and by the Ohio State Medical Society and by families and parents and people that many times it's been difficult to get a medication or a treatment because 
the protocol by the insurance company was time-consuming and difficult. Mm. And physician offices tell us that, you know, they've had to hire more staff. And we all have heard of that over the years. It's just becoming very tedious, some of the insurance requirements. And we're not saying this law that was passed is not doing away with prior authorization. It definitely has its place and is needed, but it streamlines the entire process nice. and it'll make it easier for individuals um, of any age to get their arthritis treatment and medicine. And it's not only going to help people with arthritis, it'll help people with other diseases that um, struggle to get medications in a timely manner. And as, as you and I talked about, especially with inflammatory arthritis, that medicine is needed soon to prevent that joint damage because once that joint damage starts, it's, it's you're not going to... So we were really hard excited. Hard back up time. Exactly. That had to be an interesting process, Mary, to uh, work on advocacy and see a bill through and get two houses, two sides of the aisle to work together on something and uh, talk about that process a little bit. It, it, was, it was actually really fun. And I had never been involved in advocacy before, but for the past couple of years, the Arthritis Foundation has said this is really important. We we need to influence not only our state government, but our U.S. government as well. And so every year we have, it's called the Ohio Advocacy Day, and it was held in April this year. And there were about 50 arthritis advocates that went down to Columbus, or up from Columbus, I guess, mm -hmm. if you're from the southern part of Ohio. And we actually had scheduled visits with our Ohio state representatives and senators. And we talked about why this legislation was important to us and to others dealing with chronic diseases. And we talked about some other legislation as well. And for us to see that go through, and because you can monitor a bill, we saw it passing the House, passing the Senate, and going over to the governor. And my colleague got to go um, when Governor Kasich signed the law. And he literally does have a number of pens, and she was able to see him <laughs> to see sign him. it. It was yes. just really exciting because it showed yes. us that it really – does make a difference. And our our elected representatives do want to hear from us. And mm -hmm. until you experience that, I think sometimes, at least I was a little bit jaded. And then I saw it in action. And we're always looking for advocates. And you don't need to make the trip to Columbus, but it's as simple as sending an email or a phone call to your elected representative and saying, hey, this is important to me. And they listen. They want to hear from us. And so it's fun. And when we're at the expo on um, tomorrow, there'll be a letter there to say to um, our elected officials, we're looking at some other legislation now that has to do with um, some other, well, one of them is called step therapy, and that's mm -hmm. trying to limit um, how many times people have to fail a medicine before the insurance company will approve it. It's so that's another piece of legislation that we're hoping to get passed. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And that is an exciting piece to all of this. All fun. right. In our closing seconds here, remind us where and when everything takes place tomorrow. Yes, it is going to be doors will open at 830 to view exhibits. Our first speaker will be at 9 o'clock. It's at the Cleveland Clinic Akron General Health and Wellness Center in green. It, that is actually the address I can give you is... 1940 Town Park Boulevard in Uniontown, but it's right off of 241 Masson Road. It's um, very convenient and um, just down the road from Pav's Ice Cream, if anybody wants to <laughs> stop in go. afternoon. So <laughs> it's right there on the same side of the road. Sounds like a plan. Mary Bird from the Arthritis Foundation, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much.